to be a listening church, the church for the poor. He is asking to hear from every Catholic in every pew in each diocese in the world. By looking around at this moment, you'll notice how empty some of the pews are. That's the reason for this sin, to hear from each of you. The Holy Father wants to know what is wrong. Why are the pews empty? Where have the people gone? This trend of not going to church started long before COVID. The listening sessions are the opportunity that you have to tell the St. Mark Synod team what you think, what is wrong, and what we can do to fix the issue. The dates and times for each listening session are in the bulletin and in this last week's echo. Each session you will be asked specific questions and you will be allowed to voice your own opinions about your own thoughts and concerns. When the listening sessions are complete, our St. Mark Synod team will confidentially compile all the concerns and answers to the questions where each of you shall remain anonymous. The information from here in every church in the diocese will be sent to the Faith Formation Team in Erie, which will be compiled and all the information will then be presented to Bishop Persico. Bishop Persico will hand deliver our answers and concerns to His Holiness Pope Francis when all the bishops of the world gather around for the Synod in 2023. Please take time to invite your fellow parishioners who don't attend Mass anymore to come and voice their thoughts. These are especially the people we are very interested that they attend, those who have walked away from the church for whatever reason. If there is a reason that you want to voice the concern, that you want to be kept completely confidential, we can arrange that as well. You may write down your thoughts or concerns, seal them in an envelope with confidential written on the outside, and drop the envelope at the lock, at the lock box at the rectory outside the front door, and these will be forwarded to Erie as well. If COVID is a concern for you, we will have Zoom sessions as well. You will have the same experience, but in the privacy of your own home. All times and instructions for Zoom are listed in this week's bulletin. Please, the Synod team cannot emphasize enough to have each of you attend these sessions. The team has worked diligently for a month to put in untold numbers of hours to help St. Mark be prepared for this event. Please just don't blow it off like most events here at St. Mark. Tonight we'll show the third episode of the Chosen series in O'Connell Hall. We have pizza, popcorn, free food, we have the works. And we'll be lucky if 25 people come downstairs. Very lucky. Don't blow it off. The more the pews become more empty, the more you need to attend. Humor us. Show up and tell us what you think. Let your voice be heard. Let your concerns be heard. Not just locally, not just in the area, but all the way to Rome. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for listening. God bless each and every one of you.
Good. We begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, preparing ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we first call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, we may be defended always by your protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We hear about calling in the readings. We hear the calling of Isaiah, which is in the temple. And it's an amazing story with seraphims and in incense and being called in. Um, anyways, and then the gospel, we hear the, the calling of the disciples. Let's open our ears and hearts, hear the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, with the train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim, were stationed above. They cried one to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips living among a people of unclean lips. <laughs> Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Yes. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, uh, Whom no shall I send? Who will go for us? I know. Here I am, I said. Me. Send me. Yes. The word of the Lord. Me. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. yes. <clears throat> Yay!
letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received and in which you also stand. <coughs> Through it, you are also being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed it in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not, has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them. Not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. The word of the Lord. James and John, 
the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. <coughs> Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, now on you will be catching men. For they brought their boats to the shore. They left everything and followed him. Yes. The gospel of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus. So today we have we talk about what Dan was talking about. That was a it's called the it book was calling all people to be trying to to want to hear what they have to say about the church and how they can improve it and how to follow the Holy Spirit more. Uh, there's a session coming up. Another thing we're doing is next week is our sign up for small groups. Uh, Lights coming and we're quick and we're, we're working on that and so. It's time to revitalize ourselves. You know, with COVID has knocked out lots of things that we do in the parish out, and we're now trying to get things going. One for Lent will be to get in small groups again, and trying to get everybody to think about that, and to rejoin, uh, to get small groups so to, you know, share your faith and grow and grow God and you know, know each other better, and all these things. So, anyways, we always one of the simplest thing you do, the simplest thing you can do is like answer the question of the week. Go to go somewhere. Answer the question of me. It could be a restaurant. It could be back at the church. It could be you know somebody's home. And so today when we did last like last week. When have you felt inadequate to a role or a task you were given? How did you respond? Just like Peter, he was like, I don't know. And, you know, being catching men. What does that mean? You know. Um, so when have you felt inadequate to a task or role you were given? How do you respond? I was thinking of, I was thinking, I don't know. I thought of something yeah. when I went to Ridgeway in the very beginning, and uh, Monsignor Olmstead was listening, I was the assistant, and uh, Monsignor Olmstead was listening to me and things he wanted me to do, and uh, one was <laughs> be the co coordinator of confirmation. <laughs> and I said, okay, I've never done that before. I didn't say no, but he, he caught up nervous all right away, and I said, I've never done that before. And back then, of course, the classes were huge and in a rich way, I don't know. There would have been at least 30, 40, 50 kids in confirmation, and I don't know exactly, but it's like more than one class, I'm a coordinator, oh, okay. Well, I was about ready to figure out how to do it all that, and <laughs> next thing I know, once you says, Sister Frances Treese will not be the confirmation coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't even get a chance to try. <laughs> so anyways, and then, you know, just feeling inadequate, we all feel that way, and sometimes, you know, lots of times I feel that way, and all the tasks and duties that I gotta do, it's like, oh, Jesus, right, how am I gonna do this? And that doesn't challenge you, it's like difficult. But, you know, I don't know, my response is, gotta do it, you gotta do it. You get up, you put, get yourself out of bed, and you go. You know? And uh, that's what we should do, and that's my answer to the question of the week. So then, um, going back to this, you know, you were just talking about before, weren't you? Why don't you guys get started again? You know, uh, if it was a Crucio group meeting, why not start? If the group is not meeting anymore, why don't you get together? Why don't you, if you don't have a group, we're going to have a sign-up sheet, you know, different uh, times of the day, different days of the week, and come up with something. Remember, we used to be, said, you know, just anything, just anything, like I said, go up, if you're going out to breakfast every Wednesday or something, just answer the question of the week, and then sign up and say, we got a small group. Because it's just any little thing like that help, helps enrich our life and our parish. Our parish gets strong for it. So really, I want you to consider that. And so next week we'll consider, let's get our groups going again. Because we, in the diocese, are known for our small groups. You know, we've been up there in Erie, they know who we are. And if we don't get that thing going again, you know, we're not living up to our expectations. So think about it. So it's called Peter one more time. The bulletin has just a wonderful way to describe it. I never thought of it this way before. I'm just going to you know, read it, and, we'll, and that will be this. In this gospel story, Peter begins allowing Jesus to take command of the boat. Remember, he does that. Take command of the boat. Okay, Master, sure. Then he moved, Then Peter moves to allowing Jesus to take command of his heart. Yes, how does he do that? 
because he openly confesses the truth about himself. Peter says this, I'm a sinful man. And so Jesus touched his heart and he gave God Jesus his heart. Finally, he allows Jesus to take command of his whole life. He left everything and followed him. Just think of that. In one little encounter, all that happened. His boat, his heart, and his life. So, like Peter, we are to allow Jesus to take command of us, our possessions, our hearts, our lives. We profess our faith and believe in one God, the Father of light, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten but not made, consubstantial of the Father, for whom all things were made, for us men the power of salvation came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, became man, for our sake, he crucified in the righteous pilot, suffered death, and was buried, rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, and judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Proceed to the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the light of the world to come. Amen. With our hope and trust in God as He answers prayers, we present our needs at this time. Our response will be, Hear us, O Lord. For Pope Francis, Bishop Persico, and all ministers of the Church, that God will renew them back to the enthusiasm which they were first called, we pray. Hear us, O Lord. For peace, that God will inspire those working to reduce tension in Eastern Europe, bring forth new understanding of one another's concerns, and open new paths for justice and respect, we pray. Hear us, O Lord. For all who feel unwelcome or unworthy before God, that God's unconditional love may heal and free them and help them feel welcome, we pray. Hear us, O Lord. For greater trust, that we may rely upon God's love and providence as we enter the deeper waters of vocation, marriage, parenting, and employment, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For all who are rebuilding their lives, that God will guide employment opportunities and provide the needed resources, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For God's guidance, and good turnout for the Synod listening sessions and our small groups, we pray. Here we go. Lord. For our community churches, especially for Dr. Andy Spore, the members of First United Methodist Church, we also pray for Father Felix and the members of San Antonio, our sister parish in Yucatan, that the Spirit of God will protect them and guide them in their life with God, we pray. For our beloved deceased, especially for Jesse Hausler, who passed away recently, and for Eileen Dolan Minor, who we remember in a special way this liturgy, and for all who have died recently, may they experience the love and mercy of Jesus and rest in his heavenly peace. We pray. Here is that you'd like to voice at this time. We pray. 
pray. Hear us, O Lord. At this time, please join Father Paul with a prayer for returning to church. O oh God, giver of all good gifts, I ask you to grant the great gift of the belief in Jesus to those who left the church, and the sacraments for any reason, that they may return to the faith in which they were baptized and confirmed. In particular, I pray for, who is especially dear to my heart, may he, she, make peace with you through the sacrament of reconciliation and receive the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. With joy, and may they become members of your believing community. I pray the spirit of Mary's faith as she stood near your cross. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty, Father. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that we may become and you may become. And these gifts may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and just our duty our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord 
For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, without end we acclaim. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be brought to you gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, Bishop Donald, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Three, one, two. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, keep us always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom now and the glory is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. It is my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus be with all of you. We share a sign of peace. takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, don't, please don't forget to sanitize your pews as you leave. That'll get us ready for the 9 o'clock Mass. And uh, the men's conference is coming up very soon, next Saturday. And so uh, we have to sign up quickly. I don't know. Check the... I always get the dates wrong. When is it, Vince? Is this coming Saturday, right? Okay, so Vince is the man, or, or Mike for Golly, and get a hold of him. It's, it's an amazing, wonderful experience. Uh, uh, it's a Zoom uh, conference in Erie, and we watch it downstairs, and please be a part. It's for men. Good means of good men. Okay, so there might have been some confusion of what we're talking about here. The listening session is the Pope wants to hear from everybody what's going on. The first one here, there's three different ones you can make, just one you can only have to make. This one's Thursday at 6.30. This Thursday at 6.30 is the listening session for the Pope. And uh, the small group sign-up is next week. There's two separate things. Right? Next weekend, we saw small group sign-up. So, again, downstairs is a video with popcorn, pizza, and this uh, amazing story that's called Woo! Let the Children Come to Me. But there's one last thing. Rex Waddington's here with us. It's great. We've seen him in so long. And his birthday's tomorrow. So we're going to sing Rex Happy Birthday. One, two, three. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rex. Happy birthday to you. It's great to have that you made it back. It's been a long time. The Lord be with you. God's blessings upon you, may the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Amen. Our youth are sending forth is number 444. Blessed be the Lord. Four hundred.